Hey everyone, this is Angel with Tech Tutelage, Legend. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you're trying to connect to your remote server and you're getting this error message. Permission denied, public key. If you're seeing this message, it's most likely because you're either using a wrong user to connect to your server or using the wrong key. Fixing the user is easy. All you have to do is use the right username. But if your key is wrong and you don't have access to the key that your machine was created with, it's a little bit more trickier to get access to that server. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to handle that and how to quickly get access to your server. I'm going to start by showing you here. I have my Oracle Cloud account and I'm running these three servers and one of them, which is my web server. Apache is the one that I don't have access to. I've lost my keys and I'm going to try to recover the server. So I'm going to get this public IP. I'm going to go ahead and put it here in my browser. I just kind of want to show you it's an active server. I'm running this uh, web application here that says, oops, I have lost my SSH access to my server. And if you can see here, that same IP is that I'm trying to connect to. It is 152.70.198.186. And when I try to connect with my private key, I'm unable to do so. I'm going to go ahead and list this directory here. As you can see, I have another pair of keys. The first thing you always want to do is maybe try the other keys that you have around on your computer just to make sure that uh, you're not using the wrong one so i'm gonna try this my key here just to see just by any chance if it's not gonna work but as you can see i'm getting the same error right so in order to get uh, that server recovered uh, the first thing that you want to do is you're gonna need to have a second server so in my case i'm going to use this temp server if you don't have an extra second server you can quickly go ahead and create one that's valid for any cloud provider so i just start a new server in my case i have one so i'm going to use this temp instance to connect so i'm gonna go ahead here and grab Grab the public IP for this instance and I'm going to try to SSH into it. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it here. And again, the same error, and that's because it's actually the other key that I used for this instance. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it. Uh, it's this one. And actually, I'm going to just put a different username here just so you can see if the username is wrong you're going to get the exact same error. But if you use the proper username with the proper key you should be able to go ahead and connect to the instance. There you go. Now that I'm connected to my temporary instance, the next thing you want to do is go ahead to the instance that it's locked. And on that instance, you're going to first thing you want to do is go ahead and stop it. So don't terminate it. Just go ahead and stop it. Go ahead and click on stop. And this may take a minute or so. It depends on your cloud provider and your instance, but usually within a minute, the instance should be in a stopped state. And once your instance have stopped here, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to detach my boot volume. And again, if you're on a different cloud provider, your steps will look slightly different. But the concept behind this whole thing is the same. So basically what you need to do is go ahead and detach the boot volume from the instance. So I'm going to go ahead here and click on detach boot volume. And this may also take about a minute or so to get detached. And once it's detached, the next thing you want to do is you're going to want to go and attach this volume to your temporary instance. So in my case, I already had it. If you didn't, you're going to have to uh, make one. But this is the temporary instance that I'm going to use to fix my uh, locked web server. So I'm going to go ahead here and click on it. And I'm going to go ahead and attach the volume to it. Again, if you're using different cloud provider, it may be a little bit different steps, but the same idea behind. Go ahead, click on attached here. You're going to go ahead and select the volume that you want to attach to it. You can leave all the settings to the default. Just make sure it's read and write because you're going to be writing to that volume. And I'm going to go ahead and click attach. I'm going to go ahead, close this window and wait until the volume is attached. Now, once your volume is attached, in Oracle, there are a few commands that you need to run in order to have it connected to your instance. So to get those commands, all you have to do is click on these three dots and click on ice because it commands and information and again if you're on a different cloud provider you're going to have to follow the instructions that they have but uh, on oracle all you have to do is copy these three commands and go ahead and run them in your temporary instance that you just connected your volume to so i'm going to go ahead and run those here just copy and paste and once you have those run and you see that uh, they are executed successfully, the next thing you need to do is mount that volume to your server. So I'm going to go ahead and do lsblk. And that's going to list all the block devices. And you can see we have the SDA1, which is our root partition. And then SDC is the one that is the locked one. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this one to our MNT directory. So I'm going to say mount dev SDC 
one and I'm gonna mount it to M and T. Oh, I need to run it as a sudo. There we go. And now that that's mounted, if I go ahead and list this MNT directory, I'm going to see all the content from that volume. Now to fix the issue with your key, all you have to do is go to user's home directory. So in my case, I know the standard user for Ubuntu instance on Oracle Cloud is Ubuntu. So if you're running Debian on Amazon, for example, your user will most likely be admin. You just, you know, need to figure that out. But in my case, it is Ubuntu. So I'm going to go to MNT home and make sure you go to the home directory in your mount points, not in the home directory on your actual temporary server. So MNT home, and then my user again would be Ubuntu, and I'm gonna go to a directory called SSH, so make sure you put that dot in front of the SSH. And once you're in that directory, you can go ahead and list it, and there's gonna be a file called authorized keys. And this is where your public key is located. So I'm gonna go ahead and nano into this file. And we know that this key is not working for us. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. And the next thing that you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put a new key in here. So I'm gonna start a new terminal. And here in that terminal, again, I'm gonna list my keys. The main thing when you uh, put the new keys is make sure that they're matching, that they have matching fingerprints, because if they don't, you're gonna upload the key and you still won't be able to connect your instance. Now to confirm that the keys have a matching fingerprint and that they belong to each other, all you have to do is run SSH keygen dash lf and just give it the name of the key here so for example i'm going to try this one and you can see this is the fingerprint of the key and if i run the same command but against the public key you're going to see that these both keys have the same fingerprint which means that they're meant to work together now i'm going to assign these two keys for my instance so what i need to put on my server is my public key so i'm going to go ahead and cap this file and I'm gonna grab the content from this file and I'll go ahead and put it in that authorized keys file on the server. So I'm gonna go ahead here, paste this. Well, that didn't work. Oh, I pasted it as a name here. Hold on one second. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and clear this up and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in here. There we go. Now you can see um, I have this AAA B3 N key into that authorized key file. Make sure that when you copy and paste, you don't add any extra characters or anything like this, you know, because that will make the key invalid. So once you have that key added here, all you have to do is go ahead and save the file. So I'm gonna do this. And once that file is saved with that new key, you may want to actually kind of cap that file just to make sure that it got saved and that it has the new key. So as you can see, A, A, B, 3, and Z. A, A, B, 3, and Z. As we can see, these are the same keys. So the next thing that you want to do is go ahead, detach your volume and attach it back to the old instance. So to do that in Oracle, again, what you're going to need to do is go back to here to this screen and copy these two commands to disconnect it. And so we're going to go ahead and run these two commands on our server. That will safely detach that volume. And then you can go back to your Oracle console. And from here, you can go ahead and detach the volume. And again, just give it a minute or so and it will be detached. And once your volume is detached, you're going to go back to your original instance, the one that was locked. Go to boot volume and make sure that you attach this one back. And now that your volume is attached, you can go ahead and start your instance and now that our instance is up and running maybe give it another minute or so to make sure that all the services are started but should be able to access our web app there you go so our web server is back up and running too we can see this hello world i have lost sh to my server and now let's see if what we did actually works so i'm going to go ahead here and copy this ip address because this is the server that we were trying to connect to and then here i'm going to try to connect to it again i'm going to list this directory just to get the name of the key so i'm going to say ssh i and now we use that my key so if you recall we uploaded the public key to our server and we're going to use our private key to connect to the server so for user we're going to use user ubuntu again depending on what your user is you're going to have to replace that 
and here I'm gonna put the IP for the instance and this should work. There you go, we are into our web server Apache and that's the server that originally was locked and we we're not able to get to it. And just to confirm that we are in the right place, I'm gonna just go ahead here into var ww html index file and I'm gonna replace this since we fix it. I'm just gonna say yay, I now have SSH access to my server. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because we fixed our key. And I cannot save this because of course I have to run it as a pseudo, sorry about that. There we go. Now I'm gonna go here and say, yay, I have SSH access to my server and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this line. There we go. And now if I go here to this web browser and I refresh it, and there you go. That's how you gain access to your server when you have lost or damaged your key. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you liked it, please click on the like button. If you wanna see more of my videos, please subscribe for my channel. And if you have any questions or you wanna make any comments, don't hesitate to post under the video.